Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Abdullah Sharam. I work at the University of Maryland under the supervision of uh, Professor Ryan Sokol. Uh, today, I want to talk about our recent uh, work in developing uh, a normally closed microelectric transistor using two photon direct laser writing. So, this year is kind of a special year for the field of microelectric circuitry. Uh, it marks the 20th anniversary of the quick valve. Uh, initially, source to drain flow is permitted, but uh, when integrating a flexible membrane along with a gate uh, pressure at the top channel, fluid flow can be stopped. Notably, uh, the, the company Fluidime was started by uh, the Quake Group uh, with the goal of, of leveraging that specific component for bio, bio, biological applications. Now, over the 2000s, we saw a number of advancements based on uh, a large-scale integration of these valves, basically also for chemical and biological applications. Around the end of that decade, we saw what we could refer to as the second generation of microfluidic uh, circuitry, where uh, researchers have used multi-layered soft lithography techniques to uh, create components like two-layered capacitors, uh, di three-layered diodes and transistors, and five-layered uh, pressure gain transistors. Now, over the past decade, I would argue that there were two important trends that emerged. Uh, one is a bit disappointing in, in the sense that we're not seeing the kind of translation to, towards industry as we have hoped for. And one can consider the challenges that Fluidime has been facing as a possible evidence that uh, biological applications might not be the killer application for microfluidic circuitry. It's uh, also interesting uh, to see that in the form of a shift from biological and chemical applications towards soft robotic applications, and more with more and more labs adopting the same approach. Now, the second trend is in many ways a response to the uh, significant limitations of soft uh, lithography, which inspired what we could refer to as the third generation of microfluidic circuitry uh, that are based on additive manufacturing or 3D printing techniques. Uh, particularly, the Folk and, and Nordin groups have pioneered the use of serial lithography to uh, fabricate normally open transistors. Meanwhile, our group has have investigated uh, multi-jet and polyjet 3D printing for fabrication of, of microfluidic capacitors, diodes, and, and normally open transistors. More recently, our group has also investigated direct laser writing to fabricate uh, microfluidic uh, diodes and the microfluidic uh, normal open transistor. Uh, one thing you would notice between all these examples is that all of them are based on normally open functionalities. That's why during this talk, I want to focus on normally closed functionality. This is the logo of our lab and it depicts the three primary and additive manufacturing technologies that are relevant to the MEMS community. But I'll be focusing on one specific lab-based 3D printing technique, which is direct laser writing. This technique works by, by scanning a tightly focused pulsed laser uh, within photocubic material, where it cures uh, at a single point where two photon absorption occurs. And the, the key motivation behind, behind choosing this, this technology is the resolution which is in the order of 100 nanometers. Uh, today's work is, is divided into two, uh, two, two conceptual parts. The first is a process that our group has developed named in-situ direct laser writing. It entails the fabrication of a microstructure inside of a sealed microfluidic device. Uh, for example, here you see at, uh, at an inter two interweaving microvessels with diameters less than 10 microns. Uh, that are capable of handling multiple liquids to the, up to a pressure of 500 kilopascals. So the process begins by uh, using conventional direct laser writing to fabricate uh, channel patterns 
that, are, that have uh, like trapezoidal architecture, which is very essential for the in-situ direct laser writing process. Next, these patterns are replicated on a, a, a cyclic olefin polymer sheet uh, via hot composing process. And then uh, the device is sealed using a solvent-based uh, process to, to achieve the final COP to COP device. Lastly, we uh, load the microchannels with liquid photoresist using vacuum loading and then use direct laser writing to fabricate the structure directly inside of the, the channel. Now the second concept concerns the normally closed transistor specifically, which consists of the uh, free-floating disk, which is fabricated without the need of support structures, as well as a billet microstructure with a micropost at the top surface. When pressure or when source pressure is introduced, the fluid flow causes the disc to displace on top of the uh, the uh, top orifice, thus sealing flow across the transistor. While when gate pressure is applied uh, at the cross at the cross sectional channel, it causes the the uh, flexible bellows structure to expand vertically, thus moving the uh, the disc away from the top orifice and allowing uh, flow to resume. The fabrication process of the transistor consists of different parts. First, part of the casing is printed. Followed by that, the, the bellows structure is printed within. And then the, the printing of the casing is resumed until the end of the print when the floating disk is printed within the structure to, to achieve the final, uh, uh, the final structure. We've conducted the uh, fluid structure inter interaction simulations by varying the gate pressure uh, in the bellows structure while keeping the source input uh, constant. We observed that as the gate pressure is increased, uh, the source to drain flow is, is, uh, increases uh, proportionally, but then reaches a plateau at higher pressure, which we'll be talking about uh, in, in a few slides. So this is a video demonstration or an illustration of both the disk displacement during uh, gate actuation, where you can see the bellow structure pushing the disk upwards. While on the right, uh, quantified, re quantified results of the flow rate uh, at different gate and source pressures uh, show a few, a few interesting trends. The first trend occurs at lower pressure, lower pressures where <clears throat> Uh, where flow rate increases with source pressure up to a specific uh, inflection point where it starts to decrease again and go back towards zero. And this we believe is, is caused by the, uh, the, the fact that that source pressure reaches a certain, uh, a certain value where it overcomes the input gate and reseals the transistor. The second trend occurs at higher uh, higher gate pressures, where we notice that the overall flow rate starts, starts to decrease as the gate pressures increased, which we, we believe is, the ca is caused by expansion of the bellow to a point where it starts to interfere with the top orifice and thus sealing the, the flow itself. So recently we've been taking this a step further by designing Microfluid transistors that are that can actuate at different gate pressures, and this can be done by varying several parameters. For example, we can vary the number of bellows or the diameter of the bellow, which which basically has inversely related to the gate activation pressure. And to demonstrate this this concept, we uh, fabricated a soft microbiotic uh, gripper uh, inside of a micro channel, and that is connected with transistors that activate at different pressures. And when source pressure is, is uh, initially introduced, the transistors seal the flow from the, from the grippers and preventing their actuation. When gate pressure is applied at a low magnitude, only the first transistor or the, or the left transistor actuates and allows flow through, thus actuating the, the uh, soft gripper, while when a higher magnitude of gate pressure is applied, both transistors are activated.
and then both groupers are actuated. Here we introduce the normally closed microelectronic transistor fabricated using direct laser writing. To our knowledge, this represents the first demonstration of a normally closed transistor using 3D printing technologies, as well as the smallest normally closed transistor by any means of fabrication. Uh, additionally, we've presented initial results on the role of integrated microfluidic uh, transistors in enhancing uh, soft robotic actuation autonomy. Thank you.